When the dragons came, there was nowhere left to hide or protect yourself. Castles that men believed impregnable thanks to their high walls and defences against the army stood no chance. So all across Westeros, the kings found themselves either bending the knee or burning in flames. House Hore was no different to any other. The Lord of the Iron Isles and Riverlands retreating back after each battle. Harren Hore had spent his whole life building the mighty castle of Harrenhal, believing it to be the true showcase of power in Westeros. It was a mighty castle, a beautiful castle, but it would serve to be his doom. Believing himself safe, he hid deep within its walls. When Aegon's armies arrived, they gave him the chance to bend the knee to survive this encounter. But he refused, believing his walls would protect him. Stone does not burn. Aegon responded simply that when the sun sets, your line shall end. Harrenhal could survive many things, but it could not survive dragon fire. The flames burned and burned until it said the very bricks of the towers began to melt, caving in on themselves. As Harrenhal burned, so did House Hore, and so did the kingdom of Isle and Rivers, for soon all would fall to House Targaryen. Dragonstone had been home to many people since the fall of Valyria. Many others of Valyria blood would found themselves with opportunities to rise. One such man was Aerin the Architect. He aided in the construction, upkeep and repairs of Dragonstone, and could easily trace his bloodline to a family of merchants in North Valyria. Within his possession was a mighty heirloom from all those years ago, a Valerian steel blade. It had been called Ligmagon, after the Ligleans, his merchant ancestors. But he chose to give it a new name, a more Westerosi name. He named it Cobblestone, a token of his love for building. When Aegon had landed in Westeros, Aegon Fort soon formed around his first camp, and the construction of significant parts of it can be noted as the work of Aerin. There's stories that he was even able to lift some of the mighty stones all by himself due to his impressive frame. Later in the conquest, he assisted in battles within the Rock and Reach earning himself a name within Aegon's camp. Eventually, that name was so large that Aegon himself took note of it. When he returned to the Aegon Fort, he entrusted Aerin to construct dragon pits and holdings to support the fort. Aerin gladly did so, and by the time Aegon was crowned, Aerin had conducted most of his work. These were not the dragon pits that you may know in King's Landing today. They were still well constructed and crucial to the care of the future spawn of dragons that would birth a new era in Westeros. When it came time to grant titles and lands, Aegon believed it made sense to push some Valyrians to places of power in Westeros, in order to keep some loyalists and keep balance across the regions. Harrenhal was burned and charred, but it was still a mighty castle that merely needed some repairs though he did not understand truly the damage he had caused. As such, who better to grant it to than an architect? He was named Lord Aaron of Harrenhal now, and he decided to take his own blade as his banners, naming his bloodline House Valus. It was an honour that Aaron barely felt worth of. And yet that was not all. Knowing the damages that had been caused to Harrenhal, he was granted a thousand gold dragons for repairs to be completed. Aaron took to Harrenhal alongside his wife, Lady Arara, and began to enjoy their new castle. Arara was soon pregnant, and the builders had arrived to begin work on their towers. It seemed the future of House Valus and Harrenhal would be a mighty one. Yet there are still stories spread that the walls had been built and caked in blood, that dark rituals were cast upon this castle in order to build it. But the castle was cursed. Lord Aaron took little care to such idle words. Harrenhal was a mighty castle, and he was a mighty architect. He shall rebuild Harrenhal, and grow his dynasty greater than any other. For House Valus is built by hand.
Hello guys and welcome to Crusader Kings 2, a game of thrones. Uh, due to the unfortunate issues with the House Steed series, uh, we are beginning something new, but this is something I've been plotting a little bit uh, for a little while now and I think could be a lot of fun. And that is to experience the Curse of Harrenhal ourselves. We will be playing as Lord Aaron of House Valis. We already are married and we have just had our daughter as we begin this story, Rhaenyra. But what are, what are we actually in for? Well, <laughs> we are in for a bumpy ride with the, the Curse of Harrenhal being in effect. Uh, we do own Harrenhal and uh, these two cities which we will give away uh, because we are technically of the wrong holding type. I believe technically if we keep them, we still get a little bit of gold. So maybe we'll keep them until we get uh, another two provinces. But Harrenhal itself is... Uh, technically, the castle itself does still have the Harrenhal bonus and can be built normally. However, the other towers are ruined. This being uh, obviously the, the three main towers that make up Harrenhal. As Harrenhal is pretty massive. It's, it's, it's one of the largest castles, uh, as far as I'm aware. So we're going to be playing as this uh newly anointed ho uh, house granted these these lands within the riverlands and we're going to be trying to repair these castle ruins uh we were given a pretty significant um sort of uh reward from the iron throne for our um assistance in in building uh significant parts of uh Aegon Fort. Uh, i believe the game already calls it king's landing but i believe still right now it'd still be called Aegon Fort. Uh, this region, uh, including us helping build the dragon pits and uh, yeah, being a bit of the architect, uh, which if you look at our traits, sort of what we are. We are we are a steward and an architect, a decently strong man who who uh, assisted in much of the building. Uh, so so <coughs> this will be a, quite a different game to the House Steed game. Already starting in a slightly better position, but with a significantly different modifier here. This is going to be a real trouble. It's it's an invisible modifier, but it is indeed a thing, the, the curse of Harrenhal. And we're going to see if we're able to sort of establish a future for um, Harrenhal, where such a thing doesn't exist, where there is no curse. Or maybe this house will die out quicker than any other. That will, is uh, yet to be seen. So we're going to start off, we will go for either a family or one of the stewardships. We already have a high enough stewardship, but I think we could sh uh, could go for the fertility and health to try and get ourselves a son. See, I could try and tame a dragon, make the eight, become a knight, or I believe have a son should be our first ambition here. <laughs> Indeed, I have a new heir, my young daughter. Well, what will we, what will we look at? I'll pause a little more just go with what we're looking at. We are looking at um, post-coronation, uh, not just the post age, but post-coronation of the uh, new king, of King Aegon. Uh, the north bent the knee. The south is unconquered. Dawn, Dawn is still an independent nation under uh, Princess Mira. Uh, in law, Aegon's going to have a few attempts to take Dawn, uh, or at least his sister as well. But obviously that will not go incredibly for them. Uh, the Reach is now owned by the House Martells after the Gardeners were basically destroyed. Uh, and now House Tully rules the Trident rather than uh, House, uh, was it Jorge or Horace or whatever it is, uh, who also own the Iron Islands, which are owned by the Greyjoys. Basically, if you, what you're realising is that all of the Lord Paramount sees are the names you're expecting. Uh, like House uh, House Duradian has been replaced, or Dundarian or whatever has been replaced by the Baratheons. The Lannisters owned Castle Rock already, but they kept control of it, and the Starts kept control of the North. However, being uh, just after Aegon's conquest, you know names may not be familiar for you if you if you haven't read all of the books. But don't worry, we'll be going through this experience together. Looks like a war may have just started. Okay, he's created the lordship. His name is the King Who Flew, and it's one of my favourite nicknames, because it is a story 
of um, when obviously the Eyrie is well defended from ground troops, but the Eyrie is not very well defended from uh, aerial troops. And as such, um, young uh, King Ronald here was uh, cooped up in the Eyrie with his, uh, I believe his mother was the, yes, his mother, Lady Shar, uh, Shar of the Vale, was the regent who uh, tried to protect the Vale, seeing that the armies were all coming her way. Uh, however, a dragon doesn't need to go through the land, so the mountain fortifications of the Eyrie were kind of pointless. And it's said that when she uh, went out to meet this dragon, she found uh, King uh, Ronald on the lap of, uh, I believe it was, uh, yeah, uh, at the time Princess, but now Queen Visenya, uh, on the lap of Queen Visenya, uh, asking to ride on the dragon. And the story is that he uh, flew into the air as a king and he landed as a lord. Obviously, suggesting the subjugation of the veil. So let's see, we are indeed at war. Is this already... I think this is already the Dawn War. Indeed, Aegon is going to try and conquest Dawn. Very interesting. He's getting into it right away. Um... We, we could send troops down, but I don't think we'd make a huge impact. We only have about 4,000 men, um, so we we would not be able to do a, a lot of work uh, in, in, in aiding the king here. What I do want to do is... Uh, I do actually don't have a spy master. Uh, I'll have to send a little gift to my spy master just to make him like me. That's a problem, because my lords do not like me. It's very unfortunate. So we're going to perform statecraft. No holdings to improve. Uh, we'll collect tax in Harrenhal. Train troops in Harrenhal. And as for... Oh, I should have maybe fabricated claim with him, honestly. But I, I think I just need to do the statecraft first. But we will eventually fabricate claim. Because I need to fabricate a claim. I want to basically own this full region. So these two are currently independent. Does I already have a claim? No, I do not. Uh, as you can see there, we, we do indeed have a Valerian steel sword. We have our sword, Cobblestone, uh, which is named after our, our, our work in sort of the building of uh, lands around King's Landing. I'd be interested to watch this war. Oh, and now there is another Peasants' Revolt in Brandstone. Uh, I'm still a little ill at the moment, so apologies if I sound a little nasally, <laughs> but it'll be fine. Uh, which army are we with currently? We are with this army here. Well, let's hope the curse of, curse of Harrenhal doesn't come in quickly, otherwise we are going to be <laughs> ruling as a zero-year-old, which is not a, a, a wise idea. I'll, I'll raise her in the same way I was. I'll, I'll also raise her to be um, a steward. Looking on troops alone, this will be a very interesting war, because just the Riverlands here has about 20k. So Dawn should lose, but obviously it was... So, Dawn's attrition is one thing, but in this war, specifically, the, the situation was a little um, different. The reason Dawn won this war, basically, was just uh, Visenya, I believe it was again. It was either Visenya or... Uh, what's the name of the other sister? I can't get off the top of my head. Yeah, Rhaenys. Uh flew to Sunspear, or rather, I believe first they landed sort of in the middle regions here, and then afterwards they uh, make him disappear, uh, flew to Sunspear, and in both places they found no one. They were almost basically completely deserted. There was no one there. However, when she reached the throne room, throne room of Sunspear, Princess uh, uh, Meli uh, Mira here was sat on the throne, and basically said, uh, we will not bend, we will not kneel, but we also will not fight. Uh, yeah, you could join. You're, you seem pretty pretty capable, actually. Uh, you can be a... Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, my commander's a fool, that's why. Can I make him a bodyguard? Yes, we can. Here it looks like they're going to be absolutely swamped and destroyed because it's just going to be a normal battle, which they don't have much of a chance of winning because, number-wise, the Iron Throne massively outnumbers them, which is unfortunate. But yeah, but 
just went to the phone room, found only Mira, and Mira was like, I'm just not going to fight you, and I'm not going to surrender, and it worked. Uh, eventually, they did return again for Conquest, and that's when uh, uh, the, I guess technically in the Aegon's reign, the first dragon death happens, uh, as well as the uh, either death or abduction, it's not completely clear, of uh, one of his sisters. Well, that was, <laughs> and then they joined the Iron Throne. Is that going to hold, though? That's the real question. We'll have to see if uh, they can keep Dawn. We're really going to stay independent until these guys die, out, don't we? It is, it is very weird how the war mechanics work here. But unfortunately, I've, I've recently learned that the, the CK3 Mega War mechanics are just fundamentally broken. They, they do not work. It is unfortunate, but they are broke. So what do we want to do with Harold? Let's get a bit of tax by building these up. And I can't remember if we... Yeah, so we lose minus, uh, minus 75% for this being the wrong uh, government type. But that's still, like, minus 75% is still kind of fine for us. Because we're still getting it directly rather than through the taxes that we get from our vassal. So until we take... Uh, I either want to take these two directly or I want to revoke these two titles and own these three directly. Because uh, I, I can own three. I'm going to keep them until I can do that. I'm not going to build on them yet, though. Uh, I believe we get an event if we have enough gold to do restoration. So we may do that for a while. Uh, we were originally given a thousand gold. Uh, but a little bit of it had to be spent on debts. So... And I expect a lot more is also going to be paid on debt, so I don't know how long we're going to be able to keep this money for. Probably not long at all. But yeah, if you don't know, repairing Harren Hall is, is, like, even with infinite money, it takes 80 years, I think. So, don't, don't be expecting, if you think, I've given myself a little bit here, like... I kind of have to. It is such a hassle to to do all of this stuff, and the the curse of Harrenhal is going to be enough of a challenge in and of itself to to counteract. But I also again I want to take this slow. I don't want to just take over the Riverlands for the fuck of taking over the Riverlands. You know, I want to build up a story of of why we take the Riverlands and all of that stuff. And it's not within uh, Aaron's intentions to take the Riverlands yet. He. Uh, Sees no need to. He's been given these lands to sort of keep the peace a bit. To have a Valerian house in, in power in the Riverlands. Uh, to, to help uh, Aegon out a bit. Because we are loyal to Aegon. Uh, we are definitely loyal to Aegon. I don't want to bribe him. So this is a neighbour. He's not even... Wow. I do not like this guy. So he wants to take Wayfarer's Rest. Is that one of these ones? Hmm. Either way, I don't like him. But I don't, I don't want to lose a lot of piety, so we'll let him go this time. And then we have the little Isle of Faces. Uh, no Howland Reed to go visit it yet. But the House Reed, I believe, is, is in power here yet, right? Yeah, how, the House Reed owns the neck. Although I imagine we don't have a lot of history about the mech anyway, so we don't know if 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 it wasn't held in at this point, we we generally wouldn't know. Okay, I'll need a hundred prestige to revoke anyway, so we want to get our prestige up then. We're already getting a little bit. Oh yeah, so we can rebuild Harren Hall. Cossack eight hundred. There we go. And just like that, we have no money. <laughs> yeah, we build up a castle town so we get a little more tax. So yeah, that event basically begins building these ones. Uh, I don't believe it needs... I'll check if it needs the improved holding. I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Great. Hmm. He wants to take my job at Master Arms, but asking my help to do it. 
I'll help him, but keep an eye on him. Let us... Do we want to oversee the realm? Probably, for now. Although, do we have anyone who's better suited for this job? Yeah, I know he's, he's a powerful vassal, so I'll be annoyed he's not on the council, but I kind of don't care. <laughs> Say, same with this guy. Um, no, let's just go for the best option. I'm now known as the Black. Lord Aaron the Black of Harrenhal. Interesting. I wonder what uh, gives that nickname. In CK3, you can hover over and see like what the nickname means. But I think there's so many nicknames in this that they, they weren't able to do that. Like, I could think of at least a hundred bloody nicknames in this mod. What modifier does he have here? Oh, he's increased his taxes. I do love being able to, to see the owners of Valerian Steel Blades. Because there should be more... I believe there's more of them, actually, at this time. There's only... Um, the only ones that like get made after this is a couple in 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 sort of these regions, uh, especially the Lannisters. Oh no, sorry, the Lannisters already got theirs because their one's kind of their one is believed to be linked with the the fall of Valyria. So that was a while ago, uh, but there, it's believed that basically Lannister gold may have helped fund the fall of Valyria uh, in in the manner that uh, they paid, uh, I believe, Bravos. Um, or the faceless men, basically the ones who would eventually pay the faceless men, they paid a significant amount of money for a uh, Valerian steel blade of their own, which they then went and lost. Very, very smart move. Interesting, very low levies in King's Land now. Just in general. Like, the garrison isn't great, but the levy's even lower. So, so I, I mean, it kind of makes sense. It's, it's mentioned that basically the, the Crownlands have so little men. So it makes sense that the king actually wouldn't have uh, that many men under his control. This is actually a really good province. That's got such good building potential. So I think I want to own that one directly in Butterwell. Because I'm, I'm thinking about this, you know, I, I've mentioned, I mentioned in the House Steed series, I have to think about this both from a story perspective, but also, you know, I have to at least think a little bit about the game mechanics, about making money, and especially when we got Harren Hall to rebuild. So yes, my uh, wife is in the final months of pregnancy. Okay. Uh, she isn't a big fan of me, though. And she's currently in hiding. Here we go. She has her child. We are not going to call him Hagen. That's a weird name. Uh, what options we can have? That's what it is. Oh, yeah, because it's Westerosi Valyrian, I was going to say. I like Damon. We'll go with Damon. And now we have a son. Wonderful. We have our son and heir. Obtain a dragon egg, tame a dragon. Um, for now, I, I already have a position on the council, right? So I don't need that one. I would want to become a knight. It'd be interesting. I mean, I can just flat out buy it as well if I when I have a hundred. <laughs> Let's see, we have enough money now. If we were to revoke this title, what are we looking at? He actually would accept. Let's see if, if, if it's true and he does accept. Indeed he does. Okay, and that means we will give away this one because it's slightly lesser. Let's see. Uh, word is spread of your success in rebuilding Harrenhal. One of the workers told me that the ancestors built the original castle and that King's Harren's curse was created by mixing blood into the mortar. Hmm. Ooh. This one could injure me or severely wound me. So... 
slay him, his wife, his children. God, that's such a mean thing to do to this worker, though. Like, let me look at my traits. Would I actually just kill a random worker? I mean, I'm I'm moderate. I'm a bit uncouth, sure. I am cruel, but I don't know if I'd be cruel for no reason. Although arbitrary does mean I don't really care about justice, so... Let's see. Um, this won't give me... I think this one's getting favour with the Septim's fine. Losing piety. Because, I don't know, this is a really risk risky one. Because the best you get out of this is wounded. I think we have to stick the piety hit here. We're going to unfortunately kill this guy and his family. Like, we don't care about justice, I guess, so it makes sense. Did this guy go independent? Okay, no, it's just doing that thing where it shows him uh, differently because of how I've taken stuff now. Whereas if I do this, yeah, there we go. So now we have two castles under our control, and we'll build up this one a bit as well. Samuel main game fussy. Sure, he's my he's not my kid. <laughs> I don't care. Oh dear. Okay, this I don't know if this is gonna be my castle or not, but my wife is dead. Um Oh dear. Um I don't have much money for a big funeral is the problem. I will we'll do a private wedding. A pr wedding. Private funeral. And I will ha already have to look at new brides. It will be unlikely there's going to be any Valyrians around. Oh. Is the problem. I can do it this way if I just find characters. There we go. I've already set it up a little bit. Uh, decent stewards here. A bit of a lowborn though, so it will cost me prestige that I don't have, I think, to marry them. Right? Like If I marry this... Uh, they're very similar, these two, aren't they? Both attractive. Both skilled stewards. I wonder why that is. Um... I mean, it's dead. Oh, this is my this is my wife. That's why. I said, that's my wife. So this one who's super similar to my wife. Ah, oh, she's married. Damn. Let's have a look again. A treasurer from Driftmark. She's too old. Um. Reign of the Iron Throne. Would she? Marry me? Yes, but it'll cost me 200 because I'm just a courtier. Uh, let's reduce the build time. I will check that in a sec. Because I, I really do need to get me a new wife. So it looks like I'm going to have to go for another option. See if we can get a riverman. See if we can in, in get ourselves in the culture a little bit. Um, I don't know. She's a bit too old, I think. I'm a little younger. Twenty-eight. Yeah, but they're not the they're not a great option because I want one who's at least the the child of a lord in some way, or related to a lord. Right, so all of these are just knights. They're all in their forties. I mean, I'm not young either, but I prefer a younger wife. Uh, it's going to cost me prestige to marry any of them. I think. Oh, but she's a Westerman. That's that is the problem we we've now have. Very unfortunate. I think Roseman's going to be the best option here, unfortunately, while she is older. Now, let's see. It's, uh... Justica Lucamore is doing a superb job. I'm having trouble with uh, a town and a castle in River Run, and I shall, of course, have my Justica to try and increase my relationship with them. Uh, let's get Feudal Vassal Opinion. Peace be with you. 
Give me a dowry, please. Thank you. So what percentage does this guy actually have? 18%. So I guess keep your fingers crossed. I shall attend Lord Tully's feast. Get my relationship with the Tullys up a bit. It was poor health that took my wife. Unfortunate. And my rival is Brindon Tully. Is that his heir? No, it's his brother. Well, if he shows up, I'll kill him. <laughs> See anything worth building? I mean, a court, having an increase in court size is usually uh, pretty useful. Oh, and we're at war again. Uh, so what is the, prop, the war about here? Uh, it is a war of the, against the tyranny of him. Against Aegon. It, I, it, by the looks of it, based off the fact it's this tiny guy here, I don't think it's going to be a major problem. It's literally just him. <laughs> Nobody has sided with this guy. Although he'll forever hold that one victory over those random Targaryen troops. He'll, he'll they'll write that one in the song books. They don't mention how they all shit themselves. They don't put that one in the songs. In recognition of your honor, glory, accept an office to anoint you with the holy oils and make me a knight. Yes, please. How wonderful. Every ruler needs to go out and meet the peasants in the fort in some time to time. Just to make sure you know if they still exist, if nothing else. As you head for the locals of Molliston, you speak very frankly about what you think of them. Something they took great offense in, it seems. You look back to ensure your guards are here to uh, keep you out of harm's way, only to notice they have all gone to the local tavern. Before you notice, they begin to throw things at you. 40% chance to get away. Uh, Quincy seems to somewhat like me. Let's try and run to Quincy's place. Safe at last. Who would have thought that the peasants would be so easily insulted? So the, th the thing is that the, the curse, I believe, was, was technically believed to exist before... The castle fell, but it, you know there was no actual proof of of there being a curse. It's when the castle fell that the that the curse was clear as day to everybody. So let's see if we can fall in love with our wife. But um, uh, yeah. So we realistically, right now, the there may not be a curse. People people may not think there's a curse. That's yet to be seen. We could be the the originators of the curse in a way. If things go badly for us. What battle do we have going on here? However, it's this guy. So it's Maidenpool who's fighting. Uh, a great melee in the northern tradition is being held at Blackwood Vale. Hmm. I I will witness I will witness the fight. It's interesting that they I know that they are old gods. So I don't know if the old if the melee is is a old gods thing. Because they're not, they are still technically rhythm and culture. So I guess it must be a religious thing. He fought bravely. He is a true warrior. So the winner is Mark Blackwood. The brother of the uh, Lord of Blackwood. While at the tournament, I was listening to some lesser lordling describe how he collected tithes from all his serfs. As a listener, he was realised he was giving his serfs plenty of ways to avoid giving their due. Oh, so I get a little bit better from, from hearing this guy being an idiot. You know, like, hang on a minute. That's not how you do it. Let me show you how you do it. <laughs> the final group provided a fine spectacle for all. As long as we make it back in one piece, I consider that a... a Good tournament. 
<laughs> it's very interesting how basic the, the modifiers appear. It's work is fast by two, makes sense, but then you've got a large pile of debris. Do these have no? So it's it it's only specifically uh, Harren Hall which has it. So the reason Harren Hall is in ruins, which I'm sure I probably meant, I obviously I write the introductions after I do the video, so I don't know if I've mentioned it or not. I'll try and make sure I keep it in my head to mention it in the video, but I'll, I'll mention now just in case I'm an idiot. <laughs> the reason Harren Hall felt falls in the first place is I've mentioned House Jorge are the ones who held it, uh, but they also basically the the Lord of House Jorge hold uh, held himself up in Harren Hall. Uh, it was his great, mighty, powerful castle that he was super proud of. So he he went and he hid himself in um King Aegon is a clad lord. Okay, so he, he, that's just him saying that he's uh, made this the heir, the prince's title. Well good, we now have a, a Prince of Dragonstone. That's fun. Uh he he made uh Harren Hall this very powerful and important castle and um, he tried to hide in it, believing that he would be safe. And uh, Aegon and his massively bigger army showed up and basically said, you know, come out of the castle or things are going to get bad for you. And the dude was like, absolutely not. God, no. <laughs> I'm going to stay in this castle and I'm going to be absolutely perfect because I'm staying in this castle. Uh, so Aegon burnt the castle to the ground. Uh, there's like stories that the, the castle literally melted and the, just the pressure of the, the fire. Aegon's dead? Wow, at the age of 34, Aegon Targaryen is dead. And his newly born zero-year-old son is heir. Well, that's something. That is, that is definitely something. Wow. I was not expecting an Aegon death um, so early on. Thought he'd maybe get a little bit more, more in his tank. Okay, we have some bit more levy reinforcements as well. Hmm. I I mean I'm fine owning owing favors to to lesser vassals as long as they aren't ones who can use it like in a way to absolutely screw me. <laughs> Let's see. So I don't have a claim yet. I do think I want to take this title. And I know he's going to say no. Huh? The, the, he died at zero years old. So now the ruler of the Iron Throne is Visenya. <laughs> well, the, the House of the Dragon is already falling to bloody pieces. <laughs> Uh, let's let's try and take this castle. Uh, I'm wanting to get my armies up and take this guy out. Goodness me. 4,000 just from this province is wonderful to have after the House Steed games. I, I did I did not want to do... I didn't want to start as a count all over again after how long House Steed took. It is kind of my... my honest truth about all of that it it took so long for me to do it that i was like this time i want to start a little more in an elevated position where i can do something and i looked at what counties you know had fun stories around them and harren hall had always been standing out i've been thinking about harren hall uh for a little while now i was actually the, the original idea was to do a peter baelish uh harren hall game but since uh, we no longer have our custom house game, I thought we'd do this one as a custom house. If you do want to see a Baelish game, uh, Baelish is in is in my options. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing a Baelish game if, if people are interested in it. Sort of Baelish and Stannis are, are the ones that really stand out to me. Or possibly uh, the Young Wolf in Rob Stark. Uh, those would be a little bit shorter games um, than what... This is planning to be a long game, but... Oh, dear. Okay, already my, my son is now ill, and I'm not saying it's linked to this uh, curse or anything, but it's certainly not a good sign.
We have him. We have him in irons. The battle is won. The war is over. We have won. Uh, I don't care about melees. I'm a knight, but I'm not like you know. It's below me. I don't care. I'm not going. You can't make me. I don't want it. Yeah, fortunately, we did also accidentally loot the castle. Oops. Oh, and now Claw Isle has a dragon clawing into it. The Lord Donna of the North has Dragonstone? What? Why? Why do you have Dragonstone, Lord Donna? He's the the son of Prince Do uh, uh, Prince Torrin. Or Paramount Torrin. What? How has this happened? Call a uh, Lord Corlys Valerian, who is the brother of the the Lord of Driftmark. Uh, now also has a, a claim on, um, or has a dragon to ride. I, d I just don't know how this has happened. We're going to have Starks own owning Dragonstone rather than the Targaryen heir. And her new husband by matrimonial marriage is King Duncan. Who has no parents, apparently. That is, that is something. Oh, so the game actually does list Oris as just a proper sibling. Because uh, obviously the, the belief is that he is a bastard son of uh, Lord Aaron. But it's not explicitly mentioned as far I'm, as I'm aware. But, you know, everybody everybody's accepted at this point that he is. Just makes sense. Let's see. Let's build up some barracks, please. Look at that, Harren Hall is already growing strong under us. Cargon uh, Coheris, who's the leftover of the uh, technical actual owners of this uh, province, but shh, uh, is a threat to my rule. Don't have any proof. I surely have the right to arrest him, and I'm not going to arrest him. Well, okay, after the last guy showed up to me and said this to you, wouldn't, wouldn't you have been like, let's maybe not tell this guy that uh blood is what's needed because he killed the last guy in his family i'll kill rado instead though why not we have made another blood sacrifice maybe i should bloody have the ruthless tricks <laughs> i'm acting pretty bloody ruthless what, what what's house malister at war for here house malister are at war for Lord Lionel's claim on Stiflin. So, this province here. Fair enough, you'll probably win that, mate. Lord Lionel the Bewitched has usurped the title of Stiflin, so he won his war. Good job. This guy is the exact same colour, but he's a, not owned by them. That is so weird. The same colour, but not a vassal. We should prepare, as winter is coming. I'd love to see if the, the AI ever repairs old stones. Old stones is enough what I was looking at. I was looking at a couple of ruins. Obviously, I already did some of them. But uh, old stones is a very interesting story of its own. If you if, if you don't know it, go, go search up about old stones. Why is McCalin independent? Who's allowed this to happen? Probably the same person who allowed the Starks to own Dragonstone. The Starks, famous for not going south, are in Dragonstone. <laughs> I think we will... Um, we'll, we'll wait till the month for that. We'll call it there. But I think we'll call it there. This has been um, a very fun first episode for me. Maybe a little less action-intensive than the House Dude was. We've taken over all of those uh, castles we took. But the the story and the, the game's only just getting started. I really hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, uh, please let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions about what you want to see in this series. Let me know. But uh, the Curse of Harren has already appeared. It's uh, 
nearly took my son, but thankfully he has survived, although for how long. But it has taken his mother. So we can already mark down one death to the Curse of Harrenhal. And who knows if it's going to take any others. Uh, thank you guys for, for watching. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for some upcoming series, uh, especially the CK3 series. Uh, that one should be very fun. Though, uh, <laughs> that one may be uh, a little delayed, as I've mentioned. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, please leave your love and your comments down below. I, I always need them. Cry, cry. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. And I'll see you guys next time for more Crusader Kings 2. A Game of Thrones. Until then.